Ready? And action. G'day, we're Hallie and Brad, and welcome to the walkthrough video of our 19 foot zone peregrine. Alright, so over the next few weeks, we're making our way over to Western Australia. We thought while we're going over there, visiting some epic campsites, it'd be good to also show you some of the great features that we're loving with our Peregrine and um, yeah, give you a walkthrough at a bunch of different campsites along the way. So let's get on with it. So after spending Christmas with our family on the East Coast, we just said goodbye and have started our trek back over to WA. We are currently in, what are we in? Corathel? So we are currently camped up at Carathul on the Murrumbidgee River. I think this camp's called the Trust Bridge Carathul Free Camp. We've got our caravan right here. It's beautiful. And it's eh? right on the river. So beautiful because this time last year, well not this time, but about a year ago we came through here and we couldn't camp on any of these river camps, hey, because of all the flooding. So it's this been was literally really underwater cool. this time last year. Yeah, it's really cool to come back through the same area and actually experience all these great free camps on the river. All right, so I guess I'll start off with what this caravan actually is. And this is a zone 19 foot Peregrine. So the Peregrine is the zone's 19 foot model. And what this is, the beauty of this caravan is that it's a composite construction. So that means that the body is pretty much 100% timber free. It's um, all it is, is foam, fiberglass, and that's vacuum infused with resin. So it makes a really strong composite material um, that zone um, are known for. So. Yeah, it sits on a, a chassis that's made in-house at Zone Caravans. It's galvanized and it's also got this black protection pack which stops uh, scratches and stuff up the side of it when you're going down tough tracks. So the beauty of the composite is that it makes this caravan super lightweight for what it's got. So this caravan has 600 amp hour of lithium. It has nearly 1100 watts of solar power and uh, it has nearly 300 liters of water carrying capacity. So this caravan weighs in at 2.7 tons tear. So when we've got all our gear in it, it weighs in about 3.3, 3.4 tons, which is um, perfect for us to tow with our single cab Land Cruiser. We'll go up the front and show you the storage box, which is um, super lightweight and mind blowing how much space I have up there. Look at this chair, fold that up. And this is the front box. Look at that, that is so light. I wish you could feel how light that is on camera. So you can actually see a bit of the fiberglass construction here on the inside of the box. So this front box is a really cool storage area. It's all composite except for the front where it's just got this aluminium skin and it's really deep. Like you can see how far I can put this chair back in this box. It goes right back. So look how deep that is. I could fit two of those chairs length to length and still have a bit of room. So that big storage space in the front, I've got heaps of gear in here. I've got basically all my caravan spares, all my caravan storage. I've got sea gear mat. I've got an extra pump that, so zone supply this sea flow pump which you can use to have an outdoor shower, you can use to draw water out of a creek. Like, check that out. That's all supplied with your caravan. How cool is that? But yeah, all that stuff lives in here and um, out of sight, out of mind, and uh, a really nice, easily accessible place to store all your dirty gear. So you can see on the front here, we've got two diesel tanks, and that's because this caravan is 100% gas-free internal. Um, so we've got diesel hot water and a diesel air heater which is really um really nice takes away a lot of complexity and the diesel is way more efficient than our last gas setup so yeah at the front here we've also got a blackjack um, electric jack that has saved our life we um used to have a trailer mate jack one of the hydraulic pump ones it was um pretty cumbersome to use and we couldn't just leave it on the caravan so it's Really nice that we've got that. You might be thinking that having all this storage space up the front is kind of silly because you're just putting so much weight on your ball. Well, that would be correct, but Zion have actually balanced this caravan out really well. And when this rolls off the factory floor, it has about a ball weight of 190 kilos. So they give you that 
ability to be able to stock this front part up under the bed, like all that storage in a caravan is usually at the front of the caravan. So it's really good that Zone designed their caravans with a light ball weight, enables you to be able to load up the front of the caravan where all the storage area is. Okay, so I did mention earlier that this is a 100% gas free internal caravan. Doesn't mean that I am out of gas, I still can run a barbecue. So on this side, I've just got this four kilo gas bottle that runs to a bayonet on the other side for our outdoor kitchen. We'll get a little bit more into our outdoor kitchen a little bit further on in the video. And yeah, I'm just using the rest of this box as a little bit of storage for some more barbecue gear that I've got. But yeah, really nice, eh? Well, there's our first little bit about the caravan. We'll show you more when we get to our next campsite. I'm not sure where that will be, but we'll see you when we get there. Well, we've been traveling for most of the day. We've um, pushed through Victoria into South Australia from New South Wales today. And um, we found ourselves on the banks of the Murray River. This is attempt three to get a campsite. We are traveling on arguably the worst day of the year to travel New Year's Eve. Uh, but we've managed to pick ourselves up a nice little dirt patch here, a Hogwash Bend campsite. It's a free camp, very popular with holiday makers, ski boats, jet skis, the whole kit and caboodle tonight. So it won't be the uh, peaceful free camp that we usually go for, but hey, it's New Year's Eve, people are having fun. And uh, tonight we'll show you another one of my personal favorite features of the caravan, our outdoor kitchen setup. Now that's our Weber, our air fryer, and uh, our massive table over there preparation station. So. Yeah, we'll get into that um, when the sun goes down and uh, maybe even crack a coldie because after all, New Year's Eve. Hey, Patsy. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, the sun's setting on the Murray and now I'm going to show you one of my favourite features of our new zone, Peregrine, and that is our outdoor kitchen setup. So in this little tunnel boot here is my favourite part, having an outdoor kitchen it's outdoor kitchen, but sort of whatever you make it um, is so good. To be able to have this barbecue on the slide, all this utility, and like that, you've got your outdoor cooking set up. As you can see, we've also put our air fryer outside. So we like doing a lot of cooking outside. Having the little power point on the inside of the tunnel boot there allows us to be able to put our new air fryer that we got for Christmas. Thanks, mum and dad. <laughs> outside so we can cook our hot chips and stuff and it's literally as simple as hooking this little bayonet fitting into this point here I'll just slide that in got to turn the bayonet fitting on and then cook with gas I also run this anchor channel along here so I can easily tie down the air fryer easily tie down the barbecue move it back to front whatever. At the moment, it's facing this way, but you can easily change it around. I just keep it facing that way because if I have got the awning out, it um, does kind of get in the way. So yeah, moving on to the other part of the outdoor kitchen is this massive preparation bench that we've got here. This bench can be really whatever you want it to be. As you can see tonight, we'll prepare all our food here. We'll um, dish it up and we've got all these little pockets and holes here for cutlery and plates and seasonings and in here we've got a portable outdoor um, induction cooktop and we've also got a pop-up sink right here pop it that down this all comes supplied with your zone rv by the way 
and an outdoor hose. So we've got a spot there where we can connect a bit of water in and we can even do our washing up out here. So, so happy with that. And also an, a spot where you can put your TV, watch the footy, watch the cricket, whatever. But tonight we're just enjoying some music and this beautiful campsite and we're about to cook up a nice little feed for ourselves. Right, no joke, 20 minutes later, the chips are done, steaks are done, Patsy's even knocked up a salad. Here's the chips, it's just finished. How good do they look? I used to cook them on the Weber hot plate and it'd take forever and they'd still be soggy. But these are steak cut chips, fit for a queen or a princess. Now I get extra chips. There you go, that one. <laughs> and yeah, so, so easy. And uh, that's what I like about my outdoor kitchen and actually very blessed to have a low bug night tonight. Get it done early and I'll show you how much power we've used. Now keep in mind, we have had the starlink running um, all afternoon and all well, this tree cover, so haven't really been getting any solar this afternoon or very minimal. And the inverter's been going all afternoon, powering the starlink. And this is what we're at with our batteries. There you go, 85%. So running the air fryer does sap a lot of juice, but we just run it for 20 minutes and we're only getting at 85%. Gonna get in this while it's hot and enjoy a lovely sunset, so. the next stop on our trip to WA is Clare Valley and I'm so excited to be here because last year when we came through SA we stopped in at the Barossa Valley and we had such a fun time there but we had heaps of people telling us that we should check out Clare Valley and they highly recommended the wineries here so we thought well we'd save that for the next time we come through here and then it didn't even cross our mind until like two days ago <laughs> Brad was looking at the map and he's like guess where we're gonna go through well it was <laughs> It was only a 30k detour, so it was a no-brainer for us. We yeah. have a couple of days off our sleeve. We love wine, and uh, we also love South Australia. So, yeah. as you can see, the weather's pretty good. So, we've stopped in the Clare... Well, we're not in the Clare Valley right now, I don't think. Uh, we're, maybe um, just a little bit out of it. We're at a place called Blythe, and there's an awesome free camp here near the, at the sports ground. So, we've come to camp off here, and it's crazy that it's Christmas holidays and there's no one else around. <laughs> it's nice, isn't it's it? It's wild. But yeah, we've just turned up to camp, yep. and the first thing that we do, which has been an absolute game changer for us, is the airbag suspension. 
It is the best thing ever. All zone vans are fitted with Cruise Master ATX suspension across the range. You can't get any other suspension. So that goes to show how good it is if they're putting it across the board. So um, first thing we do is we come inside here to our little instrument panel. And you can see there we've got um, our pressures and our right and left up and down airbags. We've got the manual leveling um, airbag. So it's all done through this little manual setup here. So I've got a little app on my phone. It's just called Level Remote. I pop that in there on the floor. It shall tell me whether we're down on the left. So we're down on the left. So all I do is I let the air out of the bags all the way, get it right down on the bump stops. Um, so that sets up a really good base for us and then we level it out from there. So, so there we go, we've um, leveled out. We're right on the bump stops and I'll just push up on the left hand side and she comes up a little bit. And then my phone will say yay or nay. So it needs a little bit more. And then you get that submarine sound and you're all good. Amazing, that's the Cruise Master ATX suspension. Before we set up completely, I'll lift the airbags all the way up so I can get underneath and show you what's going on underneath. Talk a little bit about the chassis and our water carrying capacity. So the chassis on a Zone RV is Australian steel and it's manufactured in-house at Zone RV in Coulomb. And as you can see, it's got some six mil box. They've got gussets and plates where they need additional strength, but they've also notched out and reduced weight wherever they can to um, make the chassis as light as possible without compromising the strength of the chassis. So you see all the little gussets and notches and this is an off-road caravan. So having a lot of water carrying capacity is um, great. So there is a bit of a trade-off with water carrying capacity. The previous van had about 300 liters of water carrying capacity. So does this one. Um, we find that's a good amount of water for us to be off grid for an extended period of time. And that 300 liters equates to 300 kilos. So it's a lot of extra weight you're putting in your setup. Obviously in a perfect world, um, the more water you can carry the better, but there is that trade off. Yeah, 300 kilos seems to be around the sweet spot for us and our weight limits. And um, that's uh, the way that it is with this van. It's a very simple um, way to fill up. So you can see here, this is where our manifold for our tanks and our mains water. So it's simple. Um, every single tank has a inlet. We just push the hose onto there and it fills the dedicated tank. So tank one, two, and three. And uh, whenever we're collect connected to mains pressure, we just hook it up to that and that supplies water to the whole van. The water tanks are located just in front of this first axle and um, then from here on backwards. So it keeps the ball weight light. And I've been really impressed with how well the Zone RV has um, handled with or without water. Um, you can flick it in the corners, don't get any tail wag. Yeah, the way the weight and the stability of this trailer is, um, it's really good. It's a really good towing experience. So yeah, that's the uh, chassis, the water tanks and the uh, suspension. So let's um, go and enjoy the Clare Valley and uh, we'll see you guys a bit further down the road.
continuing on with the caravan tour. I'll take you to the back. There's a little bit going on at the back, so we'll spin around there. We've got a ladder, which is one of the things that I really wanted, wanted to eliminate carrying a 3.2 meter extension ladder that weighs like, I don't know, 10 kilos. So got that out of the way and my ladder is always accessible. So that's really good for cleaning solar panels, cleaning the roof of the van, getting up there, servicing anything you might need to. So also we've got a dual camera at the back which feeds to a monitor on our um, rear vision mirror so we can have two cameras running. Um, one that looks straight down and one that gives us a rear vision mirror, mirror behind the van. Again, a few questions about this. This is a Space Tech carbon fiber Starlink pole. So it just basically gets the Starlink up out off the ground out of the right way. You can extend that pole up to three meters. At this point, it's about two meters and it's really easy to put on. So it's really as simple as lifting it up, twisting it, and then it comes off. So you can easily just plop your Starlink on there, run the, run the cable down. Roll it up on there when you're ready. Box down into these two little mounts. This all comes part of the kit. That weighs 900 grams, so basically nothing to get your Starlink out of the road. And that cable runs into one of these little flat out multi-reels. These are a great little thing for cables and uh, extension leads and stuff like that. And it just keeps it nice and tidy. Usually I have it tucked in the bag like that, but I wanna show you this morning. So there that is. Just gone one spare wheel. We haven't seen the need to carry two spare wheels in any of our travels, so that's good. And the Starlink, I'll come around this side, Patsy, and just show where the Starlink, Patsy's just tripping over some bushes and she's getting eaten alive by flies. Welcome to South Australia. So yeah, the Starlink cable just runs along here to a little RJ45 port in the side of the van. So there's a female port on the outside of the van right there comes with a little cap a little dust cap and then there's a female port on the inside of the van where we hide our starlink modem um, under the l-shaped seat so that's a uh, super easy you can buy these cables cut with the rj45 spliced onto them um, but i just did it myself yeah so before getting on the roof i'm going to make the most of the rain that fell last night and this morning and clean the solar panels so this is how easy it is to get on the roof pull that down kick your shoes off or your boots and um, on your way up with your microfiber towel. Up on the roof here we have seven high quality red arc solar panels which equates to just under 1100 watts of solar for us so I'll get up here this morning give them a quick clean give them a once over after coming down that dusty road and uh, we'll be maximizing the amount of solar we can get in but check it out it's pretty neat up here. Very nice. So we'll keep moving now and uh, make our way across to a camp that I'm really excited to get to, but I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to make it in there because you do have to drive across the salt flat and they've had a bit of rain. So fingers crossed we can get in there. It's an epic spot if we can. And uh, yeah, we'll see you when we get in there. Really going to plan. We're heading out into um, Mexican Hut Campground. It's a bit late in the day. We're just cruising in, taking it easy, and uh, I've just done a tire. So cruising down this pretty tight track, 
and come up to this tight little bush so i'm just crawling my way through here nice and slowly and then i just hear and a bloody stump was hiding nice sharp edge on it and it's completely done a sidewall so it's punctured the sidewall really good that's irreparable so i'm gonna have to jack this thing up and uh keep going forward because obviously i can't go backwards here Fuck. well definitely not ideal to puncture a tire a few days before you're crossing the nullabor especially considering we popped a tire going along the nullabor last year uh, but yeah i've just replaced the tire i've cut away the bush as much as i can i've even trimmed up the uh, stump so there's not so many spiky stakes and this side i'm just going to try and hug this side a little bit tighter and i've also done some pruning on that bush there so we're not scratching up the side of the van so fingers crossed patsy's uh guiding me through i've earned a beer now <laughs> so we're just going down this track i don't know if we've taken the wrong track today but a few months ago on wiki camps people said the track was fine and you get a 21 foot van in there maybe we're just being a bit protective of our new caravan as well because the track is just getting narrower and narrower and all the bushes are just getting tighter and tighter we've still got like another two k's three k's until we get into the actual campsite mexican hat has evaded us once again we're gonna go back out the same way we come in try and find a uh, camp for the night pretty disappointing but it's full-time travel quite the eventful day yesterday this is where we've ended up down we're just camped down behind this dune here at a place called scott's beach and it's just outside of fowler's bay and only about 10 k's from where we punctured that tire yesterday but it's a really beautiful national park camp 12 bucks a night like the whitest sand and the bluest water it's absolutely amazing and today much better day than yesterday but yeah we'll carry on with the caravan tour and uh, we talked about the solar panels and everything last, and now we'll go inside, I'll show you what it feeds into, and uh, show you how we monitor all that electricity that comes in, and we'll also catch up with Patsy, and she'll show us um, some of the internal features of the van. So let's run down the dune. Beautiful campsite, look at the dunes there, Fowler's Bay National Park. Magic, okay. Run down the dune here. Here's the setup. Pretty dirty, it's begging for a clean once we get to our destination, but whew, a little bit puffed out from walking up that dune. Good morning, Patsy. Good morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've been showing the viewers the uh, views of the bay. It's, it's a pretty beautiful campsite with all the yeah. sand dunes and it's the blue water. Like today. Yeah, today is a ripper day. So, all right, the electrical system in our Peregrine. It's a complete red arc system. So the electrical board is on the outside, but it all feeds in through this little TV MS system here. So this is like a heads up display and also controls a lot of the features in our caravan. So we can turn our lights on here and we can turn our inverter on, control all our fans, pumps, air compressor, lights, external lights, fridge, yeah, inverter, the whole lot. Also, you can see our tank levels here. So we've got one, two, 
and three and the one there is a little gray water tank so the beauty of this system is that it can all be switched through the bluetooth app on our phone which has become super handy so yeah the power feeds in goes through the all the charges and stuff and it gets stored under the seat here so this caravan was built prior to the new laws coming in so we still have our lithium batteries inside our van i know this has changed and this has to be all sealed um, from november but this is where ours are and um, it's a pretty good spot for them. So we've got three 200 amp hour Red Arc lithium batteries. So yeah, the solar feeds in from the roof, through the chargers, into the batteries, and we can see all our stuff here and control it all from here. So that's awesome. All right, Patsy, sorry, oh. I've put the cushion on crooked. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has to be neat and tidy. It is a very neat and tidy and as you can see, with what colors we've got in the van we've got like a gloss white on the on the um overhead cupboards we've got like a charcoal -y, um feature on the bottom of the cupboards and we've also got like a, a black floor so really like the colors with this van yeah um i think i was always a bit apprehensive about having a lot of white but when we first come in here i think my first um, thought is just how open it is and I think that's a lot to do with the white cabinets because they your eyes aren't then distracted by it and you're more so like looking out at the open space um, it's only a 19 foot van but it feels so spacious I think from the cupboards but also because of our layout so we have the door at the front which we was opposite to our last van and we've noticed a huge difference with that because it means that we have this open area to walk around the bed um, and I think it gives us more bench space as well yeah for sure um, which has been awesome and then the other thing that contributes to the nice open feeling is the l-shaped lounge which is we've just been loving um, because you don't have we used to have cafe dinette seating and i feel like yeah they like cut into your hallway whereas now it's nice and open we have more space to sit it's easier for us like working here and this table can um, easily be like maneuvered so if you're not sitting there you've got now heaps of space if someone's cooking or doing something you can get past easily and yeah it works really well for us and that can also that table can also go down uh, and become like a spare bed if you option for that as well which is a cool option so because it's a 19 foot van and to maximize space we do have a queen size bed but it's in the bolt we have a bolster the bolster is just essentially this bit of your mattress that's kind of chopped and it sits at the back there so that during the day you can have your bed pushed in, you've got heaps of space still, but then at night time, you can bring it out to have a full size bed. So you just pull these ra rails out the bottom so you have your mattress support, and then you shuffle the mattress out. And then you go around the back and you just push the bolster down into that spot. And then you just push the bed back in so that you don't have a gap. And then, yeah, as you can see, you've now got that extra bed length, but it doesn't worry you because that's where you put your pillows. So you don't actually notice it when you're sleeping. But yeah, um, so that's what it would look like if you were to keep the bolster out. Obviously it does encroach on your space a bit. So we just pack it up each day, which again, super quick to do. You just pop that back up. It's just like another step when you're making the bed. Like you've already got to make the bed anyway, so it's not that hard to just mm. have the step of putting the bolster out. And then can you please just push the mattress and pull? Push, so once you've finished in the morning, just push the bed back and then you've got all that space. But that space was that's quite, done. like that's quite large. You can walk through that space if you don't want to be pulling the bed in and out all day, but we um, just like it because it gives us that extra room and i'm like six foot one so i definitely need the bolster i've tried sleeping without the bolster in our previous van and in this van and uh, it's just not enough room for me so that's um how we do it and how we save space in a smaller size van yeah and it's not a problem at all no. um we've got heaps of underbed storage there's actually a lot of good storage here we have um we have these little foot storage lockers so if we lift this up you can see that that's where we can store our shoes. 
mm -hmm. or if you want to store something else there. So we also have uh, these two Soroka fans on either side, um, which is super handy. They create heaps of airflow. And of course we have our skylight thing as well, which we've been loving. So we can just put that up and then we can um, put the little screen across so that the flies don't get in. Mm. And then we have all this nice airflow from there and at night time we can see the stars. So that's just been beautiful. Okay, so our van is completely gasless on the inside and Zona making all of their caravans like that from now on. It helps them with being dust free as well because there's no points for the dust to get in. Once you close the doors and the windows, dust can't get in. So that's really awesome. Because we don't have gas anymore, it means that all of our cooking comes from the electrics. So in our kitchen, we don't have an oven. Uh, we don't have a gas cooktop. We just have the induction. And now because we don't have an oven, we have heaps more storage space because we get an extra cupboard and that's been awesome. But we have actually gotten an air fryer so that we can use that as well. And because we have so much solar power, we're able to yeah, run the air fryer, run the induction and it's not been an issue for us. So that's been pretty cool. And we also now have a compressor fridge and if you've watched us for a while you would know that our old gas fridge was an absolute bane of our existence so to now have a compressor fridge it's just been truly life-changing like not only um does it keep things cold all the time we actually had to turn it up yesterday because we realized it was too cold and we've just been so used to like just put it on the coldest setting but that was too cold uh so it's just been amazing it wasn't even on the coldest setting it was on setting three there's five settings and i had to turn it down a peg <laughs> and like um coming into this camp we literally said last year oh, i remember that was a spot we pulled over to put the covers on the fridge vents outside because the gasless vents have the vents whereas now we didn't even have to do that anymore we can just drive on in not worry about dust coming in yeah this fridge has been awesome and it's a lot bigger as well so now when we do our big off-grid stints we can fit all of our cold food in there without having to worry so that's been a very nice change so all our internal appliances that are running off 240 like our cooktop our toaster our microwave aircon washing machine all those appliances are all running through this 3000 watt red arc inverter which is down here so that's just under the fridge here. And you can hear it's just kicked on there, so it's, something's come on load a bit. But um, yeah, that runs our Starlink and everything. And it's able to run quite a fair bit at the same time. So the other day, we had the aircon running off grid, which is life changing for us. We also had the cooktop running and the washing machine all going at the same time. It was pulling like 200 amps out of the, um, out of the batteries, like for that short amount of time. And uh, yeah, it's still soldiering on, so. Yeah, the power system in this van enable us to cook gasless and uh, not have trouble with our batteries or worry about having to get gas has been a massive change for us. <laughs> yeah, and even yesterday, it was a pretty overcast day. We had the Starlink running all day uh, and yeah, by like the afternoon, we noticed the battery was at 97%. Mm. So even in overcast conditions, it was getting enough charge to keep the Starlink running uh, and we didn't have to worry about it. So <laughs> that was nice. Like come and look at a bathroom because we've had a bit of a bathroom upgrade now. We have a lot more room in here compared to last time. I think we can both fit in here. <laughs> We can both crunch our teeth finally together. <laughs> and um, another result of having a bigger bathroom is that we now have a lot more bathroom storage. So we were used to storing bathroom stuff under the bed um, previously, whereas now we've brought that weight back to where it's meant to be, at the back of the caravan, in the bathroom. Um, this down here is our diesel hot water system this has been my favorite thing inside the caravan i think it's a relatively new concept what it is is it's we've got the diesel tank at the front of the van and this hot water system is powered by diesel no gas no electric only diesel um and so how does it actually work bro? it heats up i'm not exactly sure really how it works but i imagine that there's some type of coolant so you can see a little green liquid there so there's some type of heat absorbing liquid that would ex would heat a heat exchanger or something up the water would run through the heat exchanger and it gets warm so as soon as that glycol heats up we've got hot water on tap i know so this is our control button here all we do is press 
that button and now it probably takes about two minutes before the water is hot and then once it's hot it stays hot for as long as this is on and you can set a timer as well if you want it but we usually just turn it on and then turn it off once we're done with using hot water it uses barely anything like i think we've filled up that diesel tank two two times, yeah two and times. we've been in it since october it's now mid-january so pretty good two efficiency. maybe three times but yeah it uses yeah. like two liters every week or every two weeks or something like that yeah crazy so that's been awesome you can he hear it heating up now um now because this gets hot it does mean in zone oh, oh, I'm too close. that's all right <laughs> overflowing at the moment but this cupboard we're crossing the null gets a bit warm so um they just advise not to put creams or anything that you don't want getting warm in there. So we've used it as our dirty laundry storage, which I'm also loving because we used to just have a dirty clothes bag next to our toilet in our last bed. So now it's all tucked away and we can fit heaps in there. That has been a game changer for us because now rather than just having um, 15 litres or whatever we used to have of hot water, and then that was your hot water until it redid its whole cycle again. Now, once you press the button, it was just hot for as long as you want it. As soon as you turn this to hot, and like the water that will come out will be hot. Um, so it works really well with your off-grid showers as well when you're just quickly doing on, off, on, off. That water that comes out is hot every time. So, And then like we can both have a shower, we can do the washing up. Yeah incredible <laughs> uh, we have our little two and a half kilo chemic washing machine which as we said before we were running the other day while the aircon and everything was on and another change is we now have a compost toilet so we've gotten rid of the cassette much to brad's joy he absolutely Ooh. hated doing the dump point run i don't blame you but now we've said goodbye to dump points so the way that the compost works as you've probably seen is there's the wee compartment and the poo compartment so when we do our business um like for the boys brad he has to sit down so that he can aim it into the wee compartment and then you just change the wees when they need doing which is every two days usually for us and then as for the poo compartment um again there's no chemicals you just chuck a peat moss brick in uh, which you can get from Big W and we got supplied with the first one with the caravan um, and then you just chuck some water in mix it up let it settle and then it looks like wet soil and it pretty much stays that way as you keep using it and ours is lasting us about five weeks yeah. um, and then when we empty it well, Brad when he empties it he's been very good doing that just put it into like a double bag and then go chuck it in the bin I've done it once Oh yeah, you've only done it once. Yeah, so it it's not much of a chore. And it's got this little, um, this little fan that is constantly in it, giving it some ventilation. Um, so yeah, we don't get any smell, literally can't smell anything. Even when you're using the toilet, mm. you don't smell it. It's not like a drop toilet at no, all. No, no, you don't have any smells coming up to you it's just anything. an earthy yeah and when, smell. when you open the toilet then you can smell it smells just earthy mm. um so it's not like we really struggled last year in the heat of wa with our toilet um you know once the caravan gets above about 30 35 degrees the chemicals just, just make it smell um so we don't have to deal with that anymore so very grateful that was the worst. <laughs> and while you're in the shower, oh, look oh, how big it is. This is a massive shower, like huge. I can. It's yeah. Big enough for two people, really. And um, you know what? Our last shower. That's a good way to save water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our last shower had like check plate on the floor, and it was like really hard on your feet. But Zone have made this like fiberglass shower pan, and oh my god, it's like silky smooth on your feet. I love it. But yeah, this is a really big shower for a 19 foot van. I thought our last van had a big shower, but this thing is massive. Yeah. It's going good. Yeah, eh? that's right. It's only a 19 foot van. No, not the time. <laughs> So yeah, a lot of changes for us, lots of upgrades. We are very, very grateful because yeah, this last few months and 
living in it but particularly the last two weeks actually traveling again we've just we just keep saying to ourselves like oh i just can't believe how much easier this has made our life and i just can't believe how how well everything works and you can really tell that everything's being designed um with the idea of trying to make things as easy as possible and what makes sense and what works so it's been great well anyway that is the inside of our van now we are going to pack up and we are heading to Bunder Cliffs which I'm so excited for I'm um, fingers crossed that the wind stays down because it's not a nice place to be in the wind but yeah we're gonna pack up and go there now That has been an epic caravan shakedown slash walkthrough video and what a way to finish it off here at Bunda Cliffs last night. The weather has just been perfect for us this morning. Yeah, it might look windy, but it's actually not that windy for Bunda Cliffs. Last year we were here and it was crazy. We couldn't even <laughs> camp here. So it was awesome to be able to camp here. But thanks so much for watching this video. We're now going to continue over to WA where we'll see you in the next video and we'll be back to our normal travel episodes. So can't wait to share that with you. Thanks for uh, tuning into the caravan walkthrough. If there's anything that we didn't touch on that you want to know about, leave it in the comments. As always, thank you so much to the people that are watching and supporting us. Um, you're the reason why this can all happen. It's also to Zone because without them, we wouldn't be in such a cool van traveling around Australia this year. So we're super grateful as well. Absolutely. All right, we'll see you in WA guys. Peace out, be good. Bye. <laughs>